Today, I'm growing crystals using mono ammonium phosphate. Now, this is really cheap stuff that you can get for three quid online. It makes a brilliant at-home science experiment for kids. Or, as I'm doing it for myself, just a really good fun little experiment. Now, I have to be honest, I was so optimistic when I started that video that nothing was going to go wrong. and It was going to be a great little tutorial. But so much went wrong that it's almost become a what not to do. That said, I managed to recover from multiple disasters, so this whole video is not quite what I planned. But if you want to stick around for the ride and a little bit of amusement on the way, please feel free. Pause quick if you fancy, this is what you'll need, but I will be going through each of these things as we go. First step is I've got some filtered water here that I've taken out of my coffee machine because it's got a Brita filter in it. And that's just because I'm in a particularly hard water area, so there's a lot of calcium in the water. So I tried to filter that out because the impurities can kind of muck up the crystals. I've got to measure out 100 mil for my seeding solution. This is the crystals that I build my initial crystal cluster off of. So we've got about 100 mil there. So this water has to be heated. We want this solution to be as saturated as we possibly can. I've seen there's some slightly large crystals in this already. And I'm hoping I can sort of speed up the seeding process by sticking these crystals on. Theory is I'm going to put it on one half and not the other half, just to see if we can control where the crystals are going to grow from. It's worth a shot. But this is what I'm going to try and stick to this with a little bit of my nail glue to speed up the whole process. We'll see what happens. So you can now see in here, I've got five little crystals. I'm now going to get this water just coming to a very light warmth. I don't want it to boil, I just want it to warm up. And whilst it's doing that, just really lightly, I'm going to measure out how much mono ammonium phosphate I'm still reading out of the packet. At this point, I'm going to have about 65 grams worth. This is for the seeding solution. So this is different to the growing solution that we're going to have later. And, ooh, it's quite a bit. I thought this would be less. Okay, that's my 60 grams. All of that is going to be used for my actual main growing solution later. Aha, I can see the tiniest, tiniest tendril steam. So I'm going to turn that off. I don't want this to be too hot. So we're going to pour this in here. I'm not necessarily expecting all of this to dissolve. This may well stay quite cloudy. But that's fully expected. I don't mind that one bit. At the moment I've got like this crystal mush stuff going on. Watch me go rogue on the instructions within two simple minutes. As I've just popped the crystal mush stuff back in here to heat it up a little bit. Ooh, it is dissolving a bit more. That's positive. I can also see dog hair floating in it. Not so positive. I'm just doing my cheeky little bit of nail glue on one half for our little experiment. Do you think when they made this nail glue they thought some geeky geologist was going to use this for crystal growing? I don't think they did. So these were my crystals from earlier. Frankensteined ammonite and I'm hoping that will create a base where it will start crystallising off of. Gulp. Let's see what happens. So we're just going to plop it in. Oh. Hmm. It's bubbling. I don't think it's meant to be bubbling. So I wasn't expecting it to bubble. Okay. So it's turned into a new experiment because I didn't think this through and I put in ammonite, which is, this is a piece of limestone. And I didn't necessarily think through that this is an acidic mixture. So I appear to now be dissolving my ammonite because it's acid plus limestone. So it's all coming off as carbon dioxide. That's what the little bubbles coming off are. And yeah, that wasn't my smartest move, if I'm honest. This was rookie error 101. Okay, we've now stopped panicking that we were dissolving my poor little ammonite. I'm going to pick off the couple of little crystals that I stuck on, which, may I just say, did actually stay. And now we're going to use a really tiny bit. So this is um, a piece of sponge fossil. This is made of silica, so this shouldn't dissolve in an acid. <laughs> Whoops-a-daisy. So we're going to pop this one in instead. Yay, no bubbles this time. That's more what I expected it to do. It was meant to do nothing. That was the whole point. It shouldn't take too long for these seed 
crystals to form. So I'm going to get on with something else for a little bit. And the key with any kind of crystal is making sure that it cools slowly. Now this is the same when you actually have rocks. So the slower a rock cools, the bigger the crystals will be. And generally the clearer and less deformities will have in them too. So I don't want to put this anywhere too warm for a minute. I want to put this somewhere that it's sort of quite cool. So I've got a downstairs room that doesn't have any heating. So this should make sure it cools and evaporates really slowly. I prefer this to take two weeks and have some interesting crystals than two days and they're all pokey and tiny. So and this one's not doing a lot at the moment, but I can see some like crystalness starting to form in the middle there. So we have our little experiment here. Now I'm going to have to wig this out because I now need to create a growing solution, which is different than the original seeding solution because I've got my seed. How do we get an out? Spoon? I think a spoon. So I'm just going to drain him off lightly. Look at that. So we've got proper crystals growing here. I, I now need to make sure that the next solution is 40, 45 grams, maybe up to 50 grams per 100 ml. So if I turn this on and start yoinking out the crystals so I don't waste anything. I'm liking the word yoinking today. That was, that's a solid seven grams of crystals that will save me having to use more powder. So this is pretty much a rinse and repeat of what I did before. So I'm going to pour my Brita filtered water from my, <clears throat> from my coffee filter and I'm going to make sure I've got about 200 mil just to make my measurements really easy. I'm being highly inaccurate here. I'm not looking for absolute perfection, We're just going for as good as we can. So that can plop over there for a minute. And I've got my seven grams already in here. Now I'm just going to add up, I want to get to 85 grams. I'm looking for that approximately 40 grams to 100 ml of water. Okay, that's 88 grams in total. So that'll be what, 44 grams per 100 ml? That, I'm quite happy with that. I'm gonna leave it as is. Water. Just like before, I'm gonna heat this up again. I've also gone and washed my bowl in between so that I don't end up with any of that ammonite accident residue left over. I've gotten it to the point now that it's it's off the heat, it's it's hot, but it's nowhere near boiling. So I've got my nice clean bowl. Very gently put my little seed sponge into the base of my bowl, keeping it as close to the middle as I can to allow it to really grow. So next step, putting this in there. Why does dog hair get on everything you love? I actually realised there was more than just one or two dog hairs in this, so I've just run off and retrieved a strainer very quickly. Ideally, I would have used a coffee filter to get off any dust, but I don't have one. So, little tiny strainer it is. We're going to put this downstairs, and I'm going to leave this maybe with a little cover on it just to stop any more dog hair getting into it. And, um... Yeah, we'll leave this for a couple of days and see what happens. Okay, so it's been another 48 hours again. So this puts us at like three days since I started this off and we have some progress. Gulp, I'm nervous for this. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so that is getting huge. Okay, so this is my mega crystal cluster. I'm just gonna break some of these off. Oh, that was clever. That was very, very close. So now we've got a smaller cluster again and you can just about see my sponge underneath there. And I'm just gonna plonk that back in and leave that till after the weekend. I still think I'm gonna leave them for another couple of days to see what happens, but it's looking great. Look at him. Like, so that's my little sponge left on the inside of that. And you can see he's growing up quite... So I'm hoping I get crystal coming out like vertically. But we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so it's been about 10 days since the start of the experiment. What was going to be a failure has turned out awesome. I mean, look! 
work. He's absolutely brilliant. I'm well chuffed with this. I mean, my sponge is inside. I thought I'd just get little tiny crystals growing off the sponge, but it has morphed, absorbed it, and now we just have this really cool crystal. Now these are stable in a house, so as long as I don't dunk it in hot water, this is completely stable. But I would call that a success. Otherwise, thank you for joining me to look at some crystals. I may do some more extreme ones another day. I think I think I need to play a bit more with growing crystals onto things, maybe a flower or something a bit more interesting than a sponge that didn't grow very far. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you maybe when I get a little bit more ambitious with crystals another day.